So sing this back with me. Said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? What do you see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. Repeat. With a tail as big as a kite. Isaiah looked, and he didn't see a he didn't see a star, at least not in today's Bible reading from Isaiah, but Isaiah saw. Isaiah was a prophet. He saw a future. Debbie read that first reading for us. Ten times the word shall got used in our English. Shall. This shall happen. Isaiah the prophet is not about predicting the future, but he's casting an image. He's casting a new vision. He is producing a dream, God's dream. Chapter 1 of Isaiah, by the way, Isaiah is a great long book, the thickest book in the Bible, a major prophet, uh, more, than, more chapters than any other book except for the book of Psalms. And it gets used more in the New Testament by Jesus and by Matthew and by Paul and others than any other book. Chapter 1 of Isaiah, though, Isaiah looks around and he says, things are bad. People are fighting each other. People are fighting God. God says, heaven and earth. You guys are going to be the jury, and I'm going to put the people on trial. <laughs> I'm going to find the people guilty. People of Israel, the next time you pray to me, I'm going to turn a deaf ear. People of Israel, you fa failed to love me and to love your neighbor as yourself. People of Israel, you have elected corrupt politicians. People of Israel, you've done this to yourself. People of Israel, you have failed to feed the hungry. You have failed to clothe the needy. You have failed in so many ways. You are not walking in my light or in my sight. That's chapter one. It's a pretty scathing chapter. Chapter two, though, Isaiah says, but I see something on the horizon. Back in the days when night wind could see and little lambs could see. And so that song continues. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? What do you hear? A song, a song, high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea. With a voice as big as the sea. The sea has a pretty big voice, right? Anybody go to the ocean for Thanksgiving? And you're back? Yay, welcome back. And those of you who have beach places, the ocean has a pretty big voice. It's pretty loud when you're there. It can put you to sleep with that sound of the roaring waves at night. It can also wake you up sometimes, too, like that thunder last night woke a lot of people up as well. The voice of the sea rumbles. A psalm reminds us of that. Another psalm reminds us of that God's voice is like that. That God's voice, and God's voice for Isaiah was rumbling, saying, here is what I hope people will do. That one of these days, Jerusalem is going to be the highest of all the mountains, higher than Mount Kilimanjaro, higher than Mount Mitchell, than Mount whatever you name the mount, Mount Rushmore, higher than all these mountains. And people will look to that mountain and see God higher than Mount Sinai when Moses went up the mountain. And on that mountain, people will be invited. People will come kind of like moths to a flame or iron to a magnet or people showing up at your house for Thanksgiving. People will come. If you build it, they will come. If you build the house of the Lord on that mountain, the people will come, the nations, all nations, the just nations and the unjust nations, the corrupt nations and the peaceable nations, the nations who have olive-covered skin and light-colored skin and dark-colored skin and every skin in between, they will come, the peoples will come to that place. They will get on their interstates. And they will look and they, see, they will see those billboard signs that say, come to the mountain of Jerusalem, established 700 B.C., the city of peace. Come 
see Jerusalem city, the city of peace, and come hear what God has to say. The song continues. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king. Don't you hope that mighty king listens? Do you know what I know? In your palace warm, mighty king, do you know what I know? Of course, the king thinks the king knows everything and wants to know what that shepherd boy knows. A child, a child, shivers in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. It's a reminder of a king, but in this song, we are all the king. And all of us who have warm houses, and I know that some people even in this room today don't have a warm house, and this house is not very warm today either. <laughs> uh, the, air, the heat's out, I guess. Mighty king, there's people who don't have a house as warm as you do. Remember that? And in those cold houses, there are little children who have been born, who are growing up in the cold. You need to help them. You need to protect them. You need to feed them. If you're going to have a king and a kingdom, what are you going to do, mighty king? Of course, the song, we know this song. It's about one child, let us bring him silver and gold. Like I mentioned last week, the chrismon ornaments that we'll put on the tree later today are made out of silver and gold and white, symbols of purity. And let us bring God, let us bring Jesus our best and, and silver and gold like those wise men magi did. But this could be for anybody. This is the angel tree recipients. This is, these are children. These are people who have needs. These are children of God. Not just ages 2 and 6 and 12, but all ages of all peoples. To be mindful of who God is, that God is a giver. And that we are called to share God's love with others. This song, by the way, was written in 1962 by a husband and wife. They were invited to write some kind of a Christmas song, and they were like, we don't want to produce a Christmas song. And then they got this idea, let us produce a song for peace. 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis was going on. Let us produce a song that calls out for peace. And so apparently... At least in this song, the king hears what the shepherd boy has heard, what the, what the lamb has seen, what the mighty wind for the Holy Spirit first proclaimed. And so then the king says this, said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say, pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. What will he bring? He will bring us goodness and light. And so this song is a prayer for peace, ultimately. A song to listen and a song to hear and a song to pray for peace, peace around the world. Which is what Isaiah's dream and vision is, because the next lines, this is what God shall do. God shall bring all those nations and shall judge between nations and judge between peoples. God shall arbitrate. God shall then have those nations beat their weapons into plowshares, into things they, they plow to produce wheat and grain with, bread. And their, and their spears into pruning hooks. I may have gotten that backwards. But pruning hooks, the things they use for vineyards, for grapes, for wine, for bread and wine, so that all people can eat and that no one will be in need. A prayer for peace, but also a prayer to feed the world. Up in, even in the Washington, D.C. area, Maryland side, Virginia side, there are some now um, smart farms, not just smartphones, but some smart farms that are working with AI, artificial intelligence, to help produce good farms and quick food for people's consumption as we go towards 9.5 billion people in the world. 
And yet at the same time there are other places around the world that are burning today in Indonesia and in the Amazon because people are burning the forest down on purpose so they can put and plant something that will grow and produce like palm trees to produce palm oil that goes in our shampoo and in our chocolate and everything else so they can make some money but we're killing the land at the same time. There's a tension we have to live into about about weapons of war being turned into weapons of peace and about trying to feed people. There's just a tension there. And so we pray for peace, not just for war, but pray for peace so that people will have food enough to eat, so that they will practice war no more, as Isaiah's vision goes on to say. And then Isaiah's dream is that when all this happens, when all this happens, and it probably hasn't happened yet, but when all this happens, then people will walk in the light of God. Then people will walk in the light of God. Or maybe it has happened. Maybe it happens every day in small ways. Maybe it happens every day through you and me, through little acts of kindness and acts of peace and acts of hope. Like even the song, Walking in the Light of God, See a Hamba, that song our children might know. We are walking in the light of Christ. We are marching in the light of God. It was written in 1954 in South Africa because of apartheid, because of an old grandfather who died about two years after he wrote the song, wanted peace. And he had this vision for peace, and so he wrote, See a Hamba, we are walking, we are marching in the light of God. And he taught it to his children and to his grandchildren. And they're the ones who started this little small song that by the 1990s went worldwide. And by the 1994-ish, apartheid had ended in South Africa. And Nelson Mandela, who had been in prison basically when the song was written, had been elected president. Pray for peace people everywhere. It's amazing what one person, one thing, one idea can do. Isaiah's dream, Isaiah's vision is still God's vision and God's dream for peace for a world, for peace between you and me, for peace between those who eat turkey at Thanksgiving and those who'd rather have a Mexican fiesta. Pray for peace, people everywhere, between people who would rather sing Christmas songs during December and people who'd rather sing Advent songs during December. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Pray for peace in your own heart, in your own home. Pray that we might participate in God's nonviolent rebellion and pray that we can see weapons turned into plowshares even the cross a weapon that gets turned into a place of grace that reminds us through wheat and wine through body and blood of God's vision of God's dream for the world amen